FNSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Hello, it's Carrie Lutz, and you are listening to the Financial Survival Network, and it's time for another Triple Lutz Report. This is episode 379. I, I was in New York City over the weekend. This is the first time in over a year that I got to check the place out. I was visiting my daughters, had some business to attend to. Of course, it's the first day of spring on Friday. I go there. The last time I went there, if you remember, was in December of 2012. And I get there. I go with my girlfriend. We get off the plane. Perfectly lovely day. But they had been warning that to celebrate the first day of spring, we're going to have a snowstorm. And sure enough, like two hours later at noontime, the snow starts pouring. But I'm channeling my inner Alzheimer patient. And normally I rent with National Rent-A-Car, but they said that all their cars were uh, were fully rented. But I forget this. I had rented a car with budget, paid for the car. I go down to National, hop in the car, and you know, I got a really nice and brand new Chevy Malibu. The car is beautiful. It's got like three miles on it. Uh, this car is just beautiful. I sync up my iPhone with it. I plug it in. I start charging the iPhone. I mean, I'm kind of a German car guy, but this car is really comfortable. We ride it out to the exit. I'm in the Emerald Isle. And the person at the booth says, you don't have a reservation here. And I said, what do you mean I don't have a reservation? Of course I have a reservation. And I'm, I'm starting to get indignant. And I look at my thing. And sure enough, I said, you are right. I don't have a reservation. I'm reserved with budget because all your cars are occupied. And she said, well, look, you can have the car. And I said, I would take the car because I always reserve with you guys. I love the Emerald Isle where I don't have to go through the hassle, the paperwork and all that. But uh, I've already paid for a car with budget. And they were so nice. And my girlfriend's saying, I can't believe how service oriented the people are here in New York. Everybody here, as opposed to Florida, where they are, I don't want to say too many derogative things about my adopted uh, home state here, but let's just say that the work ethic is non-existent in Florida. And I said, you know, you're in for a treat here. So put the car back. And as we're walking out, the person from National says, hey, is there something wrong? And I said, nah, nothing's wrong. It's just uh, we're reserved over at budget. And I always reserve with you guys, but you didn't have any cars this time. So I had to said, oh, hey, we'll get you next time. No problem. They couldn't have been more delightful and nicer. And everybody has this. You probably have this thing in your mind about New Yorkers being cratchety and nasty and not nice. And this is at Kennedy Airport of all places. And they couldn't have been nicer. And we flew JetBlue up. You know, airlines are airlines, but JetBlue, newer airline, generally, uh, I've always had mostly positive experiences. As long as you don't get snowed in and the light doesn't get stuck on the tarmac for a day, JetBlue, perfectly nice airline, newer equipment. Uh, so we get to uh, National and uh, they said, you know, it's going to snow. Do you want to upgrade? And normally I never let them jack me up on upgrades. It's like I get the car that I get. I don't care. I'm not buying this car. I'm just renting it. But in this case, I knew it was going to be snowing and we're going up to Westchester County. County, which is where I used to live. And it's hilly. It's nasty up there. The roads really are bad. And I know they're going to be really bad now because we had so much snow and so many freeze thaw cycles. There's going to be potholes all over. So I let them upgrade me to an SUV. We had a Ford Escape. And I was amazed that car, that little car had 18,000 miles on it, little SUV, tight as a drum. Um, and also had Bluetooth, had sync and synced up my iPhone, and finally we're off. And the car was a good little car. Didn't get great mileage, only 16 miles to a gallon, but SUVs are heavy, clunky, non-aerodynamic vehicles. So, hey, by the way, if I didn't mention this episode, brought to you by Cloud Hard Assets. 
look, I don't know when gold is going to go up. I'm the first to admit it. I am a lousy forecaster. I always tell you, if you listen to me, you are going to lose money in the short run. Definitely not in the long run. But today, it's March 23rd, 2015. Gold is up five and a half bucks the ounce, right around the uh, 1188 and change mark. Silver, the shiny metal. You're looking, it's getting up close to 17 bucks the ounce. I mean, it's going to go back and forth probably for most of 2015 as the dollar does its thing. The U.S. Dixie Index, as one of my friends calls it, 97.17. It hit 100. Man, these central banks have been piling in there trying to drive the dollar down. It's not going to work. The central banks are the accommodating losers. They're throwing trillions at this thing now. Not going to work because you can't build confidence where confidence is lost. Right now, confidence in the dollar has gone up because confidence in every other currency is in the toilet. And once confidence is lost, and I'm talking about especially the euro, you can't rebuild it and the ruble. You're going to see confidence die in the yuan. So this Chinese century that's coming, yeah, it's going to switch. Power switching from west to east, no question about it. But you're going to see is confidence is going to switch from the from the government from centralized power structures to the individual. That is what technology is going to allow to occur. And I'm not some guy who's got these rose-colored glasses on. It's just what's going to happen. I'm going to tell you a great story about that, where the individual gets power over the corporation and really sticks it to them really well. Uh, But more on that later. And that's why I'm really optimistic in a lot of ways But we're going to go through hell to get there. You're going to go through hell. I'm going to go through hell. We all are, which is why we need to stay with one another, not let these powerful individuals turn on each other, get us to turn on each other. That's so important. You can't let them do it. And I'm encouraged what I've seen in New York. People in New York really, really will go out of their way to help you. Uh, I know that's an amazing thing, and I really had a phenomenal time. Saw my daughters there, their boyfriends. Uh, They are just some really great kids. Um, They're smart. They're motivated. They are really out there to to do things, Uh, both my daughters and their boyfriends, and they're good people, you know, really good people. And they're surrounded with good people. And by the way, I had my first experience with Uber. And Uber, not a sponsor of the company yet, but I'm going to go really out of my way to get them to become a sponsor. It was the most incredible experience. We used them twice and took New York City yellow cabs twice. Now, if you've never taken a New York City yellow taxi cab this is a, can be a harrowing, death-defying experience. Uber, exactly the opposite. Now, New York City cabs, are, the supply of them is licensed with these medallions. They used to go for 10 bucks or 5 bucks during the Depression. And it was a government scheme to artificially constrict the supply so that prices could go higher and taxi fares could go higher to enable the owners to make more money and the drivers to make more money. And it's way outlived its usefulness. It's overseen by a corrupt bureaucracy of the most dastardly, disgusting bureaucrats that you will ever set eyes upon called the New York City Taxi and Limousine Commission. And it's a shakedown racket. And they're going to license these drivers to keep you safe, make sure they're insured and licensed and, you know, just a bunch of crap. Now these medallions are going for hundreds of thousands of dollars. I mean, it is the biggest scam. And along comes a company like Uber, and they have stood this model up on its head. I mean, right now, a taxi medallion in in New York City is going for 805,000, down from its peak of a million bucks in uh, 2013. Um, So Uber comes along and and the medallion, all that does is allow you to pick up passengers in Manhattan from lower Manhattan up to 96th Street and drop them off. Um, Uber, it's an app 
for the iPhone and for the Android, and I guess probably for Microsoft, if anybody uses that uh, that Microsoft phone. And you sign up on Uber, and you can get limos, you can get SUVs, or you can just get you can just get a regular taxi as well for two dollars extra above the fare. Uber takes twenty percent cut, gives eighty percent to the driver, and they got their panties on a bunch. And much of the decrease in the price of a medallion is directly attributable to Uber, and they've got a competitor called Lyft. But Uber is really the one to watch. They're huge. They've got a forty billion dollar stock market capitalization, and it's a brilliant thing. I mean, my daughter calls them because we're going uh, from her place to a restaurant and it's a little bit too far to walk and it's cold. If it wasn't cold, we would have walked it. And within two minutes, we're greeted by a guy in a, in a small standard SUV. The car is spotless. It is spotless, immaculate. And it's a newer car, two, three years old. And he's dressed immaculately. He's groomed perfectly. And he opens the door for us. He couldn't be nicer. And the payment system's handled all by Uber. There's no cash. So he's not going to get mugged and there's no tipping. And he drives us the 10 blocks and it costs eight bucks, which is probably a little bit less than it would have cost on a taxi. Now the taxis are filthy and disgusting. They're beat to crap. They stink. The drivers often stink. Um, you know, they might not have technology. They might, they've got these TV sets blaring in these taxis. Now it's just a horrible experience. Their shocks are beat. Uh, the average taxi, Bob Grant, a famous New York city, uh, talk show host. Uh, he was one of the founders of the whole talk show genre. He used to say New York city taxi drivers don't drive their cabs. They aim them. And believe me, they do. And they'll get to the first light and then they slam on their brakes and then the light changes and they slam on the gas. And then you go through this process for about three minutes and you're nauseated. And this Uber driver is just mellowly driving over there and couldn't be nicer and had so much room in the back seat. You know, I'm 6'2". I don't just fit in the back seat of a Toyota Corolla without my knees being up to my mouth. And just a wonderful, wonderful experience. I couldn't have been happier. So uh, my daughter gives me a code. We are leaving the hotel. So I call an Uber car. Nine minutes later, guy pulls up. He's in a Honda Odyssey. I'm not a big fan of of minivans. It brings back uh, horrible memories of uh, of a previous marriage. But it's there. It's immaculate. He's an Asian guy. Again, he's well dressed. Excellent hygiene. The car is spotless. Takes our bags, puts them in the back of the car, and we're off to Kennedy Airport. And because I used my uh, daughter's uh, link. I got a $20 discount. It was 60 bucks to get to Kennedy from Midtown, New York, which is, again, about 20 bucks cheaper than a yellow taxi. Delightful experience. No tipping again. Um, I think you do have to pay for tolls, though. And I got 20 bucks off. So if you look in the show notes to this interview, you'll find a link. Uh, you'll get 20 bucks off. My daughter gets some kind of points or something, but please use it. Uh, again, $20 off. Uh, in most major cities in the country, Uber's accepted. I can't say enough good things about this company. It is the future. It's busted these companies uh Busted the taxi monopolies. You've got riots in Europe where they're using Uber. Uber is just a phenomenal concept. And when you see things like this, there's really hope for the future because it's just taken an 100 year old industry that's a government monopoly government granted monopoly franchise whatever you want to call it and you look at that and you say wow this is really an amazing thing you know a 70 year old company in new york becomes uh is getting busted out and it's happening in boston it's happening in chicago it's happening in los angeles companies are losing value because they aren't keeping up so what they're doing now is they're becoming a part of uber uh of the uber network and you know what screw them because they provided inferior service these yellow taxis they keep these taxis for a million miles gut-wrenching awful awful horrible thing 
And if they go out of business, they have only uh, one person to uh, to blame for it, and that is themselves. So you remember getting back to uh, New York City. You know the place is a socialist theme park. Uh, it's going to be bankrupt shortly. And um, we had PS one hundred six and Marcella Sills, Cruella Deville. She was riding, walking around with these hooker boots and these crazy fur coats and her BMW. So they appoint a new, uh, they finally fire her for filing false timesheets of all the things. She was a total incompetent. They don't fire her for that. They fire her for filing uh, false timesheets. They hire a new, uh, a new uh, principal in the school of no, and she is as bad as, uh, as a, uh, as Marcella was. Um, her name is Legions, Rochelle Legions, and she's a horror show. Uh, she's caused a, this is from the post. And if you want to get the true story, you know, tabloids where it's at. She's married to the brother of a PS 106 dad who uh, was friendly with the disgraced Sills. Some of the staff's fears that she is bent on retaliating against Sills detractors. She canned a, a teacher by the name of Traeger who had filed Scores of complaints against Sills. Uh, you know, uh, she like it's just uh, really caused an exodus of about 20 staffers who fled. Some retired, some quit, some were transferred. I mean, she's just continuing uh, an awful legacy of failure in this in this uh, school. Uh, Traeger said he filed 15 to 20 incident reports on a boy who threw furniture, choked a girl and said he wished he was a cop or a guard so he could shoot people in the school. And he said, bullying and violence in this school is widespread and she ignores it and blames the teacher and a substitute for a fifth grade class in October said she reported that three boys had disrupted learning all day. She couldn't finish a sentence or get through a lesson. She told the post of the unruly kids, the principal spoke to the kids who were hitting and fighting, but just returned them to the classroom. And another staffer said Legion promoted kids who should have been held back and that many who need special education services still don't get them. And Legion referred questions to the DOE press office. And the spokesman there, Harry Hatfield, said, Ms. Legion has worked hard to make progress at PS 106. We support her in this work and look forward to continued improvement for the school and its students. So, you know, this is the kind of crap that we have. This is why New York City, you know, should not be running anything near education. This is what's going on here. Uh, so Marcella Sills, you'll be happy to know, uh, she is still getting her 128000 annual salary and is racking up pension credits. Her administrative trial has dragged on since last fall. Okay, This is as of March 15th, 2015. Uh the DOE won't say what, if anything, Sills does. She probably is as effective as she was as a principal. Her removal came after the Post exposed her frequent no-shows, chronic lateness, and nine years of mismanagement at PS 106, which they dubbed the School of No, because it lacked the basics like books for the Common Core curriculum, which is a laugh in itself. Uh, gym or art classes, kids were warehouse. You remember we did a whole bunch on it, uh, but they're not learning there anyway. That school should just be shut down. Andy Cuomo, where are you? Comrade de Blasio, where are you? How do you allow this to happen? You are, are frauds. You are complete frauds. You don't care about the kids. You don't care about anyone except power about yourselves. That's it. Carmen Farina, you're a fraud. You're a failure. You are a disgrace to the children. You hurt them. You do nothing. You deserve to be fired. And I'm sure Comrade will just keep you around. And then you have the nerve to assault and to hinder the one thing that does work, which is charter schools, proven successes. And that's what you go after. I just don't understand. Uh, well, I do understand you people. You don't care about the children. You never have killed about, cared about the children. It's never 
been about the children for you. It's really about power and you know, you should all rot in hell. I mean, it just doesn't matter to you people. And you know, I just wish your kids had to go there and get this substandard education. I mean, it's because of people like you that, uh, that I moved out of New York city when it came time for my kids to attend, uh, to attend school. I moved to uh, the suburbs so that uh, my kids uh, could get a decent, a decent education. And that's, that's why people move out of New York city and charter schools has enabled a small chunk of the middle class to actually remain in New York city and get a good education. And Look, what we've seen in New York City since the communist de Blasio came there is we see murders are up 20%, shootings are up 20%, more and more crimes are taking place here. And that's what the progressives want. They want more murders to happen there. And they don't care about uh, about the hardworking people of New York. Anyways, make sure you go over to the site, financialsurvivalnetwork.com. Make sure you listen to my new podcast with Mike Gazzola, which is real estate investing that works. Mike is a real estate genius. Check it out on iTunes. It's on the new and notable. It's been there high up there in the lists, one and two on investing and uh, in business. It's a great podcast. A lot of really solid information there that you're really going to profit from. Check out FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com. It's become a go-to source for so many people. So many of you out there start your day off checking out the site, the latest news, the latest alternative news. We love providing it to you because there's just so much going on out there in the world that you can't keep up with. And we know and you know that you really, you need a source for it. And we try to provide it. This is Kerry Lutz, been another Triple Lutz Report, signing off. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Worried about the coming dollar collapse? Then you need to speak to Tom Cloud today about buying gold and silver. It's the key to protecting your wealth from a declining dollar. Call him now at 800-247-2812. Tom will help you find the exact right bullion products to keep you safe. Would you believe that Tom's been in the business for 38 years? Tom understands these markets better than just about anybody. He's seen bull markets and he's seen bear markets, and he's not worried, and you shouldn't be either. When it comes to uncertain times like these, there's only one place to turn, and that's gold and silver. And Tom's offering all FSN listeners free shipping and insurance. So call Tom now at 800-247-2812. That's 800-247-2812. Or visit cloudhardassets.com and tell him Kerry sent you. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Every week the show is growing. Would you like to be a part of it? Then go to clubfsn.com and help support us with one, two, five, or ten dollars a month and get a host of premium content with newsletters dropped into your mailbox, free books, private audio clips, webinars, and much more. Then join clubfsn.com. If you want to get ahead of the trend and ensure your family's financial security before it's too late, go to clubfsn.com and sign up. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next.